What's going on, everybody? Ryan Williams here for the FanDuel Hurry Up, and I'm here to talk about my top three biggest training camp storylines as we head into the first official day of training camp. So exciting to have football back and not just dealing with the Cowboys and the Steelers and the and the Buccaneers. We get to talk about every team. So I'm going to break this down. I got a couple quarterback situations, a couple or, and a running back situation to talk about. Let's talk about these quarterback battles, starting off with the Denver Broncos. So now we got Aaron Rodgers, who is reporting to Packers camp. Sorry, Denver Broncos fans, you can pour one out. Uh, doesn't seem like he will be uh, coming to your team. So that being said, running out with Drew Locke and, and Teddy Bridgewater, these guys are going to be in a battle. Now, earlier on this year, I had talked about how Teddy Bridgewater should get the job. Uh, he's got offensive people, offensive minds back from his days when he was at Minnesota. They're now with Pat Shermer. And you're just looking at a situation where Drew Locke is just, he, he hasn't been able to get it done. I think that this is going to be Teddy Bridgewater's job to lose. You're looking at the fact that, Drew Locke turning the ball over 15 times with interceptions, tied for most in the league. Teddy Bridgewater, yes, he did have 11 interceptions last year, but he's pretty known for being a protector of the football, and he's going to be very efficient. And now you're looking at this offense. They just brought in the rookie, Javante Williams, at running back. He is explosive. They drafted Jerry Judy last year, getting Cortland Sutton back. They got the guy Noah Fant there. They don't have a and, – and the division that they play in is, is tough. So they don't have the opportunity of just letting Drew Block go back there and, and sling it. I mean, maybe you want to say that they want to see what they have in the kid, but I think they know, and I think quarterback's going to be on their on their mind heading into the 2022 draft. So I think for this year, we're looking at Teddy Broger, Teddy Bridgewater winning that job, and you're looking at what he did with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Yeah, the offense struggled in the red zone, but both of those guys went well over 1,000 yards. I still think that Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, these guys have value and maybe even no fan, but definitely we'll monitor this throughout all of camp and, and see if they make a move. Let's go in it's, it's switch it up. We'll go into the running back situation next. Now, Cam Akers, we know it, his injury happened, I believe, on July 20th earlier this year, and that really affected the Rams outlook, so to speak. But I I'm still high on their passing game, and I talked about that um, at, at nauseum earlier on this year. But when you're looking at the running back situation, okay, we got Daryl Henderson, who is dealing with some kind of injury, and Sean McVay is saying that they're not going to let him uh, play in preseason. They're going to keep him protected. And Daryl Henderson has, has had opportunities over the past two years. This guy was the 70th pick in the 2019 draft, the third running back off of the board. And, and they've given him opportunities to succeed. This happened last year uh, when they, when they weren't letting camp makers get going. They let Daryl Henderson be back there. And he's not a guy who's been really explosive, even though that's what they tried to tell us with him coming out of Memphis. Uh, but he he hasn't caught. But uh, he's let, caught less than 20, I believe, passes in, in his career. So you're not looking at a pass catching back to go with Matthew Stafford. But on the depth chart, you're looking at guys like Xavier Jones, a, a kind of you know talent that's been talked about in the fantasy community but hasn't proven anything, Raymond Calais, Jake Funk. So maybe they make a move. I know they don't have much cap space to do anything with, but they definitely – this is a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. They need to do something at the running back position unless they think Daryl Henderson is the guy. And if they think Daryl Henderson is the guy, then that could explain why you guys are jumping up Daryl Henderson's ADP. This guy was RB45 when Cam Akers was being drafted at the RB10. And now all of a sudden, from July 21st on, this guy's been drafted as RB24. So you guys are expecting uh, Daryl Henderson to be a, a, a top-tier running back RB2. And I, I hope that that price tag can pay off. Um, he's not a guy, like I said, who catches passes. So in PPR leagues, you got to go with the grain of salt. But if you want to take a chance on Daryl Henderson, if they don't make a move, this is going to be the guy and volumes king when it comes to running backs and fantasy. So that's going to be where you want to go. Finally, to close it up, we're going to talk about the Saints QB battle. And if you guys have been following along with the fan duel, hurry up and, and the stuff that I've been doing, I've been talking about this battle for for a while. And it's it's been, you know, coming down to Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston. Um, we know that Taysom Hill has a soft spot in, in Sean Payton's heart, but 
we need to look at this overall offense as a whole because I do think that it's go- the whole offense is going to be affected by who's starting. Let's just talk about Jameis for a second here. The last time we saw him as a full-time starter, this guy was throwing for 30 touchdowns, and then he had the 30 interceptions to go along with that, so we know he's going to be aggressive. But now you're looking at a situation with no Michael Thomas there. They're going to be running out Traquan Smith, Marquez Callaway. Maybe they sign a veteran wide receiver. They got Adam Troutman there at the tight end position. Uh, you're just not wonder. You're you're just not uh, sure where this offense is going. Now we do have Alvin Kamara there and pass catching backs. Maybe that wasn't a thing at Tampa with Jameis Winston, but we do have a little bit of data to go off of when he was uh, when Charles Sims was playing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was seeing about you know fifty catch or fifty targets in some seasons, and he had a seventy target season as well. So when we're looking at Alvin Kamara being drafted as the RB three. Um, overall on average over the past week or so uh, since the Michael Thomas injury. I think that we can expect Alvin Kamara's volume to just be really um, has a huge upside, whether he's playing with Jameis Winston or whether he's playing with Taysom Hill. Now we have Taysom Hill, who is, he's a pretty dynamic player. He's a Swiss army knife, as some like to call him. He's running the ball. He's going out there catching passes. I think even if Taysom Hill weren't to win the job, I still think he's going to be heavily involved in this offense. Maybe they run some wildcat packages. Maybe they run, you know, both of these guys on the field at the same time. It'll definitely be interesting to see. But I do believe that Taysom Hill does offer a little bit of upside just from the offense as a whole when you're talking about that he doesn't have to sit back there and be a pocket passer um, like somebody like Jameis, who's rushing, had, had been digressing over his career. He can go out there and make plays with his feet. So we definitely want to monitor the situation. I still think that Alvin Kamara is the way that you want to go in the situation here. But if you want to, if, you, if you're if you thinking that, you know, there's still enough pass catching weapons or th- th- that they'll sign somebody to go with and, and Jameis becomes the starter, you're getting cheap. You're getting these guys for cheap. Traquan Smith, he, he's seen a little stock uptick, but Adam Troutman too, but Mar- a guy like Marquez Calloway, you can get towards the later rounds of your draft. So offensive uh, wide receivers, maybe you're hoping for Jameis, but if you want to go with the quarterback route and, and tie that with the running back, I think Alvin Kamara is your guy. So that's going to do it here for the fan duel. Hurry up. As we get into training camp, I'm hoping to have a lot more things to talk about with you guys. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you can catch you can catch all the information that we're giving you here right at FanDuel.